In this screencast, I hope to make a relatively easy wallpaper using trendy circles in Inkscape 0.47. The idea for this screencast came from one of our viewers who was interested in making a KDE style uh, circle wallpaper. Of course, I wasn't able to record this screencast by the time he figured it out on his own, so I'll just take a stab at doing something slightly different. Um, I'm not a KDE user, um, and I haven't really seen a lot of these uh, circle or, or bubbly wallpapers. Um, but I think I can get close and uh, maybe it'll give you guys uh, some ideas. So okay, so let's just begin. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go to our file pull down, document properties, and I've set my document up for 1280 by 720 uh, high. I know that's a little small for a wallpaper, but it's not really how big I want to make the wallpaper. It's just the, that I get it kind of in the right proportions. Uh, you guys can adjust that. Okay, once I get my page uh, size uh, set up here, what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle the same size as my page. So I'll make this 1280 by uh, 720. And I'll go ahead and align that up on my page so it's centered. Okay, and I'm using uh, the uh, Inkscape, the standard palette. And I've got this uh, slid over to the very first set of green uh, colors here. Whoops, I didn't quite get that on the page. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, and what I'm going to do is make it this dark green color here. And we'll give that a linear gradient. And I'll push the dark to the top and I'll push the white to the bottom and I'll go ahead and select that bottom one and we'll just kinda give it a uh, you can see uh, the colors that I'm using here we'll just kinda give it a lighter shade and the next thing I'm gonna do is draw a circle and for the circle I want it to be a little bit lighter so we'll change the shade and I want to make that about an even 800 pixels. Okay. Do something about like this here. And I'll just go ahead and align that horizontally on the page. And I'm going to take this and we are going to give it a 20% blur and I'm going to give this about a, let's try a 30% for opacity. I think that looks pretty good. Now, keep in mind that anything, when you do an export uh, to a page, anything that's outside of your page border will just get clipped off. So it's okay that I got my circle uh, out here in space. It's just going to get clipped off along this uh, page border here. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is set up a layer. And we'll add this below our current layer. And we'll call this background. And I'm going to select this circle in the background, our rectangle. And I'm going to do a shift page down to move those items to the background layer. And I'm going to lock that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the visibility on and off just to make sure that I've got it. Uh, once I lock that layer, then I can go ahead and draw on top of this without moving uh, these items. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is draw a circle. Whoops, i got to get on the right layer. Go ahead and change that back to layer 1. And select my circle. And let's see, we we'll want to make this uh, about a 45 pixel circle. see here make this a hundred percent to start uh, we'll give this a stroke color I'm giving it this uh, this uh, whitish greenish color here and I'm gonna make that two pixels for the stroke and we'll just push that about right here and I'm gonna change that to about 50 percent transparency okay so we get something that looks like that. Now what I'm going to do 
<coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to clone this circle. So we're going to go to our create tile clones. And I've gone ahead and, and set this up ahead of time. Um, what I want to do is set my width and height to uh, 400 pixels by 100 pixels. Um, we're going to go to our shift tab and I want to make sure that I shift that circle 50% uh, on the X and Y. I'm scaling the X and Y. I'm doing a random percentage uh, scaling by 25%. Uh, we're not doing anything on the rotation and for the blur and opacity I want the blur to randomize by 14% and I want the fade out to randomize by 14%. Okay. So what I'm going to do is select this circle and I'm going to hit create and you see that it creates a random shape here or I'm sorry a random pattern. If you're not happy with how that random pattern comes out you can hit control Z and try it again. Okay and you'll get something else. Again control Z hit create and you get something else. Okay. So you can keep doing that until you're happy. All right. So let's say for example I'm happy with that. I can go ahead and close this. Um, what's great about tiled clones is if you change the original object, it'll go ahead and change your clones. So let's say, for example, um, <coughs> I want to change my original. Well, how do I find it in this mess? Well, what I can do is click on any clone and hit Shift D, and it points and selects to the original object. Okay? So you see that I set that to 50% transparency. If I want to change it to 25% transparency, you see that it also affects my clones. So I'll change that back to 50%. Now if I want to change an individual circle or a clone, I can do that by selecting it individually. Let's say for example this is 100, I want to change it to 15, you see that it changed just that clone. Okay. All right, and I'm semi-happy with this, so what I'm going to do is just kind of move this over a little bit. That's good enough. And I think what I'm going to do is highlight this, and we are going to do a duplicate. We're going to move this down here, and I'm going to, let's see, let's mirror that. And push this down here. And since I have everything selected, I'm going to change the transparency to, um, let's try a 50%. Okay, and we'll get that to die down just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Now, this is the brunt of the tutorial. How do you make these circles or these bubbles? And how do you do them so they're kind of random? Well, that's how we do it. We do it with uh, tiled clones. Um, the Tile Clones dialog box, it's, uh, it's a little intimidating at first, um, but really it works best if you just experiment. You know, grab something, change a few figures around, you know, if you don't want 50% random for the shift, maybe you want to shift it 100% or you only want a little bit of shift, you know. You can do like 10% and it'll group those or clump those uh, clones tighter together. You know, so it takes just a little experimentation, and then uh, then you get to it. So it's not that difficult. Okay. So there's our little bubbly or circle thing, but um, let's carry on and add a few more features to our wallpaper. I'm going to draw a rectangle here, and I'm going to make sure that that is 100% opaque. I'm going to turn the stroke off on that, and we're going to make that a very dark or dark green color. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that I make this, let's make this uh, 1280 wide. And let's go ahead and thin that up just a little bit and get this, and see how this looks. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is uh, select this object. We're going to go to our line and distribute dialog box. I want to center that up on my page and I also want to push this all the way to the top of my page. I do that by selecting, where are you? This one here. Okay. I'll go ahead and close that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a line 
hold my uh, uh, control key to keep this thing straight. Hit enter. And I'm going to change that color to this white. It's not really white, it's a greenish white, I guess. And I'm going to make sure that this thing is 1280 wide. Okay, and I probably want to make that, let's give that a, I don't like that, let's give it a 1.5 for a stroke there. Okay, and what I'm going to do is select uh, my stroke and my uh, rectangle here. We'll go to our line and distribute. And I'm going to hit last selected. I'm going to center that up. And I think what I want is this one here. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. Where are you? That's the one I want. Okay, that's going to push that stroke right on the bottom of this line here. And I'm going to take that stroke and we are going to do a radial gradient and we're going to select the stroke and I'm just going to double click on that. Okay, and I know it's hard to see. We're going to zoom in on this. I'm going to select that stroke. just kind of push this up just a little bit okay we'll go ahead and zoom out and see what that looks like I think that looks a little bit better what I want it what I want to do is get that to fade out on the very ends here okay so we get something that looks like that Okay, and if you're happy with that, we can zoom out, and we can take both these items here. We'll see if I group that, and on cue, there goes my phone. So what I'm going to do is uh, right-click on this and duplicate, and I'm going to rotate this. There we go. We'll grab that and we'll send that to the bottom of our page. Okay, we're going to make sure it's centered and we're going to push it down to the bottom. Okay, and we get something about like this. Okay, now that's pretty much our wallpaper. And I just want to warn you guys that you know, when you're making wallpapers, not everybody likes your wallpaper. Okay, some think it's great. Some people think it sucks. So wallpapers are just, you know, when you're making them, you know, if you've got a good one, you know, you can go ahead and show whoever you want, post them online for people to grab. But just be aware that, you know, everybody's got their taste for wallpapers. Um, if, if this wallpaper seems a little plain to you, you can add a little more to this. Uh, what we can do is grab our pencil tool. Um, we can check our smoothing. We can do something... Uh, like a triangle in. Let me see what this looks like here. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's try it again. I don't like that either. Maybe that looks a little bit better. Yeah, let's try it one more time. No. <laughs> Make our smoothing just about 50%. Let's get a little bit smoother. I'm doing this with a mouse, and sometimes it's just a little difficult to to get what you want. You know, if you can stroke that quickly uh, with your uh, Wacom tablet, then uh, it works a little bit better sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move this here. And I'll move this right there. Okay, we'll get something about like that. And let's go ahead and lower that just a little bit. Let's see what, what happens if I do that and lower it again. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is right click on this and hit duplicate. And let's see what happens if I rotate that. No, I don't want to do that. Let's mirror it. Let's flip it. Rotate it. Uh, that might work. Let's move that around a little bit. Okay, so let's say, for example, I got a little something like this. And uh, what we want to do now is... Uh, go ahead and blur that up quite a bit so let's try like a 12 that's too much let's try like a, an, a 9 maybe an 8 let's see what that looks like let's try a 5 now well, 5 is too sharp okay and let's go ahead and grab this other one and maybe I want to try a 4 there Go ahead and rotate this just a little bit. And let's try like a four. Okay. And let's grab our gradient tool here. Die that down just a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and hit 5 to zoom in on this. Okay, and let's say, for example, that's my wallpaper. So you can play around <coughs> with this middle uh, swoosh here. Um, you know, change transparency or whatever, or you don't have to put anything in there. I kind of like to break up uh, a big areas with something. Um, but that is pretty much our screencast okay so I just hopefully what I wanted to illustrate was you know how do you make these bubbles or these circle effect uh, kind of a thing and uh, I'm sure if you just google image um, KDE wallpapers or something you'll get something and uh, you'll find kind of what, what they're doing there so I hope the screencast was useful thank you for watching I'm Heathen X